this one here, some of you have heard um, their story and it's advanced a bit further since um, the first time you probably heard it and if you haven't, it's a great story. So, picking a strategy and becoming an expert is probably the thing that you need to um, concentrate on and that's what these, they have done. In Victoria, there's one strategy that out, outperforms every other when you're looking at cash flow and if you can combine strategies, this Take note to what's going on in here. Please welcome Mark and Amanda. So we've got up here the sorcerer and the princess, um, and that's your your names for yourself. Yes. Are you on? I haven't got my tiara today, though. <laughs> Stand over in front of the board. Okay. Uh, it's interesting to get an email from Mark because it says, um, I am Mark Baker, signed off at the bottom. <laughs> it's quite <laughs> interesting. So, Princess Sorcerer, um, you'd met in her one day and you sat there and you realised you were maybe doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah. We knew, we, we pat ourselves on the back. We had a few things we'd done right, but... We yeah, a lot of things done wrong as well. So So you had a few businesses, you had um, mobile phone stores and a few things in there? Yeah, we were running about five businesses at the time, not all of them making money. Mark was working ridiculous hours and we're two young children. And um, you you sold some of those businesses with your finance yeah. and he stopped paying and you had Well, that's where you've got the light bulb moment. Um, we still had all those businesses and we were running around and we were living in a little country town. We were driving 50 k's one direction for one business, 50 k's another direction for another business. Um, luckily, one of the businesses was local and then our kids were going to school 25 k's in the opposite direction again. And our, when they talk about getting hit in the head, our son got the hit in the head the cricket back at school and we got the phone call and we're like 75 k's away and realising we couldn't just drop everything because we were running a business and had to rely on family to go and get him and take him to the hospital so that was the moment that was the moment where we said we need to sit down and make our life far more simple so you're sitting in there and the fact was that you relied on growth. You did what every other standard investor had done in the past, you relied on capital growth. Yeah, yeah. We'd um, yeah, bought, generally bought positive cash flow, but yeah, it got stuck every time because capital's high up and we're waiting for it to go up to do more. Yeah. So. so you got cornered and thankfully though in one of your businesses there was someone that was doing rooming house strategy and you'd learnt a little bit from them. Yeah, a customer of the business and that was where you mentioned us you know, selling one of them and taking the business back over. Um, that was a customer that came in after we'd taken that business back over. So had that not had happened, you wouldn't be where you are today. Yeah. And, and that was a, a real pivotal moment because I don't I know most people know the story, but I had breast cancer. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. It actually was my second cancer. I had thyroid cancer before that. And um, so it, when um, I was going through my first treatment and Mark got the call to say that, you know, he, well, he said to me, the guy's not paying the, um, the vendor loan down. We're going to have to take the business back over. He went to his karate training, which he does every weekend, and I get a phone call to say that he's broken his leg and he's in hospital and he's going to have an yeah. operation. So <laughs> I was in bed, waiting recovering from my first chemo treatment, waiting for my husband to come home to look after me, and he's actually in hospital um, himself. So, so you get these moments. he had to go back to work with a broken leg to take over this business. With a, and when a man gets a broken leg, they're very sick. <laughs> <laughs> when I get the floor, I'm very sick. Because <laughs> Dibner talks about the feather and the paper cut and the brick. And yep. this was the brick. Oh, plenty of bricks. Yeah, yeah we had plenty of bricks. <laughs> yep. And brick layers. Um, yep. So here you are, your position essentially is, um, you're, you know, it's costing you including your own home, it's costing you $840 a week in negative gearing to, to just live. So you've got yeah, to make yeah. $840 first and then you could eat after yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then done that. Uh, so what are some of the things you did? Tennis court. Well, that was a big decision because when Mark went back to work to take over the, the business and, 
and then he dragged me and he, we decided then that we were going to do our properties and that was going to be where we were going to make money and we just needed to find out how we were going to do that. And then he said to me, I've been seeing this Dipna girl and I want to go see a seminar and I'm like, oh, another seminar. So he dragged me along and as soon as she started talking and everything she said made sense so we signed up straight away. Um, and in that time we realised that we were sitting on a dual title um, and we had a lovely tennis court sitting on the second title. We have views out to Westernport Bay that looked absolutely stunning and a really hard choice was if we sold the tennis court and, got, and sold what was our garden, we were also losing the views out from our lounge room out to Westernport Bay. So currently now when I look out my lounge room window and I see a fence and not the views, I just think of how grateful I am that we had that there because it helped us move forward. Nobody played tennis anyway. And no one played tennis in the family, I know. <laughs> it, was, it was just somewhere that dog ran around in circles. That came with the house. Yeah. So you joined Dimna, you go off and buy three more properties at that point? Yeah, we actually had contracts. We actually had contracts on the three when we first saw us speak. At the yeah. one day event. Yeah. And did you go through with all of them? We did. You did. But you understood this time now that you had to do more than just buy. Yes. yes. And, yeah. and thankfully those properties had potential. Yes. yes, they did, but unfortunately we still could have done better. <laughs> yep, we could have done better. Definitely could have done better on those ones. But and that's all learning with experience. Yeah. So um, here's an example of one of the properties. So explain what this is. This one, um, that was one of the ones that we did have the contract on. That one's pretty good as far as cash flow goes. Um, purchase price? Yeah, purchase price was 210000 Um And 40 grand to convert it. Yep. And straight away revalued it to 85. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that took a bit, of, a bit of negotiation with the value, but we got it to 285. What would, a, what would a normal this house, if you just bought it as a standard investor for 210 um, and rented it to the market, what would it return you? Probably about 270, two, oh, three, maybe three. 300 a week, maybe 300 a week. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so here's um, what yeah, the existing floor plan, so you can see that there's some open space through the guts of the building. Um, you know, there's it's actually two extensions. There's a, a hallway built into uh, rooms, stupidly or yeah. whatever. Yeah, they use the old hall, hallway as walking wardrobes. Yeah. So you can see here, you've got um, a hallway in here which was wardrobe. So they've added a, a room in here and a room in here. Um, opened the hallway back up so that you had more room. So ten habitable rooms is what you're looking for, and that's what you did. And in the main bedroom is this beautiful ensuite. We did, yes, lovely. Yeah, we, we did a full renovation on this house, but I said to the builder, do not touch this you, room. Why would you renovate it? Do not touch right? it. Because that is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm surprised there's no velvet on the walls, right? So The walls are red and the ceiling is gold. <laughs> <laughs> and there's lots of mirrors, too. <laughs> this is... <laughs> This is the ensuite um, in the bed, master bedroom. Master, yeah. So you get two seventy three hundred dollars a week for the whole place. Yeah. This one room, what does it rent for? Um, it was two eighty recently. We've been getting two ninety regularly for it. So two ninety for one room. The maths here is a bit out of kilter. Someone could rent the whole house for three hundred, and they pay two eighty for one room with an ensuite. Bizarre. Mm -hmm. And you want to test the market, or well, you've tested the market, they do it yep. every day of the week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that room's never been empty, which has been a shame because I've never got to try out the spa. <laughs> <laughs> now, that one there, conservatively, with vacancies and all the rest of it, is about 30,000 passive income. About 30. 30? Yeah, yeah. Over yep, 30. Yep, yep, no, yep, I'm, I yep, want to be really yep, conservative here. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, so you go and buy this one. This one, how much? 190. Yep. You spend five grand on it. Yep. yep. And you rent five rooms? Yep. So this one here, if you did a standard rental, what would you get for it? Um, 250 Yeah, you probably... Okay, 250, so now, 250. now you're getting $500 a week for this one. Yeah. So let's look at this as the rule of two. They've spent about $200,000. On the rule of two, you would have to get $400 for it to be positive cash flow, and that's when interest rates are at 8%, and at the moment, we're down at, or soon they're going to give us money, right? Um... So the rule of two isn't really the rule of two, but it meets the rule of two, it's, um, it's renting for 500. It's, it's getting an extra um, $100 more a week than what you needed to do to keep it positive cash flow. And this is where the learning for us though was that it, 
it, it does do good return, but there was no extra strategy on it, so the learning curve for us was yeah. to... Yeah, so that was just a pure purchase. Yeah. It's a cash flow, you've chewed your equity yeah. up, you've got to wait for capital. Yeah, 20% cost or less, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so then you go and buy this one. Yes. And this one here um, is similar, 367, was a five-bed, two-bath, it's now a seven-bed, three-bath. Yep. So what you've done is you've... Um, how come I can't see that here? So you've added um, in here two rooms, a bedroom in, a bathroom in here, and closed, closed off. You can actually put another room in there. So that, this one here, yep. That one we haven't done yet, but that is next, um, yeah. Yep. And that one there will rent for thirteen hundred. Yep. Once, um, once, what's well, renting for thirteen hundred now? Um, it's slightly under um, because one room is vacant, but I think it's pretty close. Yeah, once you put the other room in, though, you it'd know. Be, it'd be over 1200 at the moment. Yeah. Um, so, good yeah. cash flow on that one, too. Um, this one comes along, it's a little three better on nicely situated on the corner block. Yeah, well, this is when we you know, picked up the idea we needed to do chunks to get some money, so I um, thought that one, yeah, there's a fair bit of land behind it, it's right up one end of the block. Um, we looked at what we could do with it, and we can fit two behind it. And they all get their own street frontage, so separate titles. So this one has been was in DA approvals for a very long time. There was a lot of stuff ups, and at one stage we had approval for build, but they realised they forgot about the sewerage. So we could build houses just with no toilets in them. Um, so, but, so let's get this right. So with a room with ten people in there, how many bathrooms do you need? One. 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 <laughs> One bathroom per ten people, right? Yeah. Like, imagine the morning for the line. Yeah. Be like this toilet in here for the women's, right? Um, and but you you don't have a minimum. No. No. no, no. no. Uh, one to one to four or five is probably about the minimum you'd want to do. Yeah. So we've got approvals on that one to build two units of five bedrooms each, um, with two, and we might even go to three bathrooms. Okay, so this one, this one here, you're keeping the front house? We'll keep yes, the front house, yeah. And yes. you're selling off the back one yep. Yep. Um, as land, yes. with house and land package style deals. Yes, yeah. Yep. With five bed, three bath, and you will run those yes. for the purchases yep. as rooming house. Yes, yep. but the good thing is it's been running um, very positive while all this is going on, so any time there's been a delay, it hasn't stressed us because we're making money while we're waiting. So you've got a passive income. You're being paid to keep a property while it's taking longer to get approved. Yeah, I mean, that we bought for 115000 and that's normally four fifty five hundred a week rent. Yep. Okay. So we've just brought that up for the first time. How much do you charge to um, look after one of these rooming houses? We charge 30% to look after one of the rooming houses. 30%? Yep. That's a lot of money. It is, but it's a lot of work. And you've also tripled and quadrupled what you would normally get for yeah. it. So no, normally they pay, they charge 8%, 9%, whatever it is. You've quadrupled the rent. So, you know, effectively there's extra management involved and you know your rules and regulations, you know what you can and can't do and we'll talk about that at the end. So 30% is not a lot of money for someone to give you the cash flow out of those deals. This one here. Yeah, that was another one. Um, where by, this, we'll by this stage, we realise we need JVs to be able to move forward, so this one's a JV. Yep, and so with this one, you're doing joint venture. What's going to be the end product? Uh, that one, the house will get knocked down, and there'll be three dwellings built on there, two eight-bedroom rooming houses and one five-bedroom. Right, and again, you will manage for the um, joint venture partner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you um, pay out an equity position because yeah. uh, we'll keep one of we'll keep the small one, the five bedroom. They're getting one of the eight bedrooms. The other eight bedroom will be for sale. Great. So then this one here is that corner block again. Yep. And you're putting two nine bedroom, four bathroom places on there. Yep. Yeah, and we've got a lovely JV partner with that one too. She's here, so. I can say she's lovely because she's here. <laughs> <laughs> but if you work here. <laughs> so this one here, what do you so you've got a six bed that you're keeping um, at the front? Yep. And you'll so you'll keep the six better and you'll manage the um, eight bedders, nine bedders. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. partner will keep the two yeah. new ones. Well, the, good, the good thing with the design that we're coming up with too is that Currently, it will be a boarding, ha a boarding house, but we, in the design, we try and create as much um, single living, so we've got 
an ensuite plus a bedroom that has a bit of a kitchenette. So, and we find those tenants stay really long. And there you read about the legislation says that you can have your own bathroom and your own kitchenette yeah. in yeah. the yeah. rooming house. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, this one here. So you bought this one fairly well. Yeah, we got this really cheap. We were actually were looking for a big, a bigger house, much bigger house to be able to do a boarding house and a splitter. Um, but I came across this and I just knew it was too cheap. And I know it's only two bedroom. Um, we've made it into three. Currently, we're just renting it as to a single mum. Um, yeah, it's a because it's because it's positive, just like this. We've got again a JV partner. Um, we've got it came through quite quickly on this one. Actually, we've got approvals for what was it seven bedroom, four yeah, bathroom yep, on the back. Yep. On the back, yeah. Great. Okay, so then you come up and now you've got units that you're doing here. Uh, this is actually with another JV partner. We've got approvals for to build three three bedroom units with three bathrooms. So, um, cash partner here will push this forward? Yeah, um, the, our current JV partner doesn't want to move forward on it. They don't have the money to move forward on it. So, so we, yeah, we need a new JV partner to move forward and on it. And again, one. you'll end up with some nice properties there. Now, this, one, yeah. this next one you come and do on your own, this is a good deal. Yeah, that one was actually advertised on Gumtree. Um, and it was already a boarding house that was purpose built in 2007. Um, We'll manage to negotiate a vendor finance deal on that to buy that one. So this one here was a four bedroom, four bathroom, four living plus one kitchen? Yes. yes. And then you went in and converted it to a five, five, five. Yep. Yeah. So now you've got five separate rooming house rooms with their own kitchen, their own bathroom yep. and their own bedroom. The only thing they share is a laundry. They share a yep. laundry, that's all yep. they have to share. So cash flow on that's pretty good too. Yep. Um, stuff that's more important than property to you. What, what's the program giving you knowledge? Yeah, yeah, lots of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, when you when you go ahead and doing deals and there's no, you don't have that fear behind you. When, before we started doing Dipna, we used to hear people that did unit developments, and we would go, "Oh my God, that's so scary." But once you've got the education behind you and you just take your little steps and you learn, it takes all the fear away and gives you replaces it with peace. And you become an expert for Victoria. You're the expert for rooming houses. Yeah, that sort of happened. Yeah, and and that happens. That you know, you get to your point. You might Malcolm Gladwell talks about it too. And so, whenever there's a question around rooming houses for me, for any of the students that I work with personally, I'll always go, Mark Amanda, we need your input here. Happy to pay you for your for your services. Cause you will pay for experience every day of the week. That's a professional that does what they do, and they know what they're doing. They often eat most the time. Yeah, for free. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had I had the council ring me that. Um, one of the other ones that's eight bedrooms will turn that to nine. The council rang me and told me I needed a planning permit, a youth permit, and all that sort of stuff. I explained to them that I didn't. They were adamant that I did. They rang me half an hour later and apologised. Um, we, were, so. we were at one of the um, boot camps and we were talking about boarding houses and um, a girl put her hand up in the audience and she had been stuck for what, six months? Nine months. Nine months. And because the council was telling her she couldn't do what she was doing when she actually could, so Mark got on the phone and spoke to, I spoke to her, town planner her, town, to her town planner and, and the deal was, fin yeah, the council had to drop what they were saying. So she had been stuck for nine months for no reason, only because she didn't know. So you've learned lots, lots, stacking strategies. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, make yeah. sure. So Brad talks about this, stacking strategies. Do as much as you possibly can on the deal. The more strategies you'll fit in, the more money you'll make out of the deal. Um, what would you have not done? Well, don't buy for future growth. Buy for manufacturing. Yeah, manufacturing yeah. growth, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Amanda, you want to say something about your part? Yeah, I do. I do want to say a lot because um, really all these... It's great with Deepner and Ian and all the team, the people that we've met have given us a lot of support. But I would have to say, without Mark, none of this would have moved forward because you can get all the knowledge in the world, but you, if you don't put it into action, then you'll get nowhere. And I've, as I said, I've had two cancers and I'm now going through finding out that I have a genetic mutation, a double genetic mutation, which has led me to have chronic fatigue. Um, Mark, and that is also why I got cancer, so that was good news to find out why. Um, Mark is a great husband, he just, I, I need at least 12, sometimes 14 hours sleep at least. Um, he just gets up, 
move forward, doesn't complain, doesn't just accept me as I am. And on the some days I literally can't get off the couch, I literally can't manage anything and there might be a meeting at the school for our, one of our kids and he'll do have worked all day and he'll still drop everything and take the kids off to the meeting knowing that I can't drive that night. So I would like to say that Mark deserves a big round of applause for everything he's done for me. Okay, so you've gone from 10, damn you, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've gone from 10 properties um, and 15 plus years to accumulate, and um, now since attending Dipno, you've um, got 19 properties, plus you're managing so, many, so much more. So you've gone from negative $841 a week, so you're well over $100,000. Um, we will leave it well over, and that doesn't include the management costs. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and your equity increase is over 500000 Yeah, and that was yeah. without even aiming for that. We've got more stuff coming with the JV stuff now, so... Yeah. Would you all like a, um, a master class in rooming houses and boarding houses around the country? <laughs> How about we do one right now, yeah? So let's start with this one, Mark, because... Um, Banks are our enemy sometimes. Uh, this yes. is cross securitising and how it can affect you, right? Yeah, yeah, that's not not ours. It's someone we know, but who we've met since we started doing rooming houses. Um, this guy mostly does um, high end stuff in close to Melbourne. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many he had, but it would have been 10 plus properties. It was 18 eight. in that one. Oh, sorry? Oh, that's 18 rooms, yeah. Rooms in there, yeah. yeah. He, he, but he had about 10 properties, all, all cross yeah. securitised, all in his private name. Yep. yep. And so he's halfway through building construction of this one. He goes to the bank and says, I've run out of money. Uh, he had all approvals and finance and everything for it, and going through the stages, and had about 400000 left to spend on it. Because it was a big conversion, 18 rooms, yep. 18 bathrooms. Three and built. Yeah. Uh, it was actually a, um, an, an extension of an existing house. Because this is high end, right? This is close to the city. This is where you get young couples and executive people to live in. Yeah. yeah. So the bank then does what? Uh, the bank said, oh, look, we're getting a bit uncomfortable with this. We want to do an alternate use valuation. And he's thinking, well, there is no alternate use. Um, they came in and, and said, I think the valuation was 3.4 for that use. They came in and said, well, the land's worth 1.8, less yeah, 90 grand to knock down what's there. So <laughs> the, value, the valuer turns up to do the valuation. Instead of valuing at the end use of 3.4 million, he says, the value is 1.9, plus the building that you're building actually isn't a standard residential home, so we're going to ask you to knock it down, which means we have to take $90,000 off the valuation price. Um, so what are you going to do about it? Yep, so they wouldn't give him any more money and then they started crawling on other ones because he didn't have the money to support that valuation for the debt he had on it. So they called him in on the loans. Um, a guy comes along and buys this one yep. and, and finishes it. So he buys it, finishes it himself um, and then gets the original owner to come back and manage it for him. The, the original owner leases it back and that's what he's done. A lot of his properties that were sold, he leased back, but they sold somewhere close to 10 properties and he lost about $3 million in the process. Didn't do anything wrong except cross-securitising, right? So let's go to Victoria. All right, um, Brian. So Victoria, yeah. we're talking about rooming houses here. Mm -hmm. All right, there's uh, legislation at state government level. Yep. So the rooming houses say that you can have... How many habitable rooms? Ten habitable rooms. Okay, so what is a habitable room? A habitable room is well, pretty much anything that's regularly occupied now. So, so um, a kitchen, a lounge room, or even a kitchen is a habitable room, you can't really sleep in yeah. there. But so bathrooms aren't habitable rooms, garages aren't, sheds aren't, but essentially everything else is. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. yeah bathrooms, laundries, and walking wardrobes, I think, are the only things that aren't. So what we're trying to do is create a 1B building. Yep. And a 1B building is what, Mark? Um, up to 12 occupants and 299 square metres. So 12 occupants and um, under, under, under roof. Under 300, yeah. Under, under roof. 
Oh, internal, internal floor, floor area, area is, but, yeah. yeah. So no more than 299 square metres. Yep. So as soon as you go, go above one of those, you're now what they call a class three building in the Building Code of Australia, which means a class three is commercial um, and it's like a motel. Every room has to have its own fire rated box and that is very expensive to build. But to convert yeah. an, old, uh, an older house into this, it's quite easy. So what else do we need to do to create a 1B? Well, the biggest challenge at the moment is the disability access. So we have to put it say, at the moment, yep. but we've both put in submission to the, to the government yes, we to have. change that. Um, so disabled access, so that yep. means you need a wheelchair ramp, Yep. and they have to be able to access all, all areas. Um, not all areas, but at least one of every common facility. Kitchen, bathroom and bedroom, basically. Yep. Yep. And they also need a bathroom. Yep. Um, Smoke detectors. Smoke detectors, yeah, hardwired, interlinked, and activated emergency lighting. Do we need, so we need emergency lighting as yep. part of that as well. And smoke detectors are in every room, basically. Yeah, so you link all the smoke detectors from room to room over the 10 habitable rooms. Um, you then have um, storage. Um, yeah, 100 litres of lockable food storage per so storage oh, 100 litres, that's not yep. a lot of 100 litres. No. It's like a um, plastic bin from Bunnings. Oh, a big plastic bin, but yeah, and you can do that. You can provide with a plastic yeah. tub. Yeah. Um, fr fridge space? Fridge space is just um, 400 litres for the house, regardless of the size of the house in Victoria. Now, I mean, Queensland have got better rules around that. Yeah. Um, then, are we done there? That's about it for the 1B building. Pretty and much be it. careful with the 10 habitable space. Oh, yeah, so the 10 habitable rooms, yeah, be, be careful, careful <laughs> right? Because you go and put um, nine bedrooms in and then you put a kitchen, dining, lounge as one room and the building surveyor might come in and go, mm, nah, sorry, that's actually now um, 11, 12 rooms. So you've got to be very careful. So be act on the conservative side and work yeah. there. Yeah, look, you go conservative to begin with, even if you're intending to increase capacity later, then go through planning once you're operating. Sure. Um, process in Victoria is um, you buy the property, mm -hmm. then you get some plans. Yeah, draw up the plans for what you're going to do, yep. And so while you're drawing the plans, you're talking to who? Um, mainly just the building surveyor. So your building yep. surveyor, so private building surveyor, is the one that's looking through and ticking off the building code to make sure it becomes a 1B building by all the design that you've done there. You then submit to the building to the building surveyor yep. to them, and then you do the retrofit. Mm -hmm. And then once that's done, they come and inspect it, issue an occupancy permit for yep. class one B. Yep. So you then occupation. Yep. Permit for one B. Yep. So then you go to council. Oh, yep. Health and wellbeing department. So health and well-being. So that, that's the key thing is you don't go to the council and until you've got to this point. <laughs> because they will tell you every day of the week that you're not allowed to do one of these when you ring them. All right? Use the private people all day long. They will try and find ways to stop you from doing it, but that is what it is. So health and well-being then signs off on it. Does the OFT have anything to do with it? Sorry? OFT? Fair trading doesn't have anything to do with it? Oh, yeah, well, Consumer Affairs does, yeah. So consumer Affairs, sorry. Yeah. 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 States. So yeah, and they'll, and they'll usually inspect the house once a year as well. So Consumer Affairs will come in and make sure that all the things are, you know, things like the door locks. So the, you'll have locks on every door, but the door handles have to be lockable from um, the outside, but when it's locked, you should be able to, like the disabled toilets, hit the, if it's locked on the inside, you hit the handle and it unlocks the door automatically so you can get out. So no one's trying to find keys or unlock switches if there's a fire. Yeah, same with, I mean, you can't have any deadlocks, you can't have any window locks, yeah. Um, like everything has to be openable from the inside without a key. Minimum size room. Yeah, minimum size room for one person is seven and a half square metres. <laughs> That's small, hey? It is small. Um, and parking? Uh, there's, if you don't trigger planning, there's no additional parking requirements, but part of the disability access will require a disabled parking space. So that will be the only um, parking requirement if you don't trigger planning. The issue with the new parking space was that the old um, code for disability said that you needed a three metre wide parking space. The new code actually says you need two parking spaces of 2.8 so yep. metres. 
um, and you'll notice that in the new developments that they'll have two parking spaces for them. All right, so that's Victoria. New South Wales. New South Wales doesn't have a rooming house, but it has a boarding house. Um, so a boarding house, it will be a um, class three building. You can have, um, it's, and it's what they call um, new, genera new generation boarding houses. So if you Google this, you will find it. We've got a team of people that um, look after our New South Wales stuff and our Queensland stuff. So new generation boarding house, you can do a 12 square metre room plus ensuite plus kitchenette um, is a single person and, and um, 16 square or bigger, 16 square metres plus ensuite plus kitchen is for a double room and maximum is 25 square metres plus ensuite plus kitchen. Right, so that's the maximum you... So eventually you're going to end up with a room at 25 square metres, you get with the bathroom, whatever, you're going to end up with probably 32, 33 square metres, right? Now, the beauty about this here is that the state government planning policy, you have to adhere to the council's design and character, and it has to look like a house. In the end, though, you get parking amenities. So if you're within um, 400 metres of a bus stop that has one bus per day, one bus per hour for a certain day, times of the day, there's lots of different rules which we teach in extreme income. The end result, though, is if you go and build these and you get a submission to um, the state government, land tax exempt to start with, and secondly, they will give you $10,000 per room which is broken up as $2,000 per year for every room that you construct and you build and you rent to someone for longer than three months. So they want people to go into boarding houses um, in for extended period of times. So we've got boutique um, boarding houses in Sydney, high-end that um, are pulling in. Now, the rebate that you will... As long as you don't charge more than... $221 for a single room and $359 for a double room per week. That's big money, right? And you'll still get the rebate. In some areas, you won't do that. Chippendale will be getting $450 a room, so I'm not going to worry about the rebate. I'll get more money by um, renting it at market rate. Queensland, I'll do one quick one for Queensland. The Queensland Rooming House Code... Um, is a fantastic tool. Oh, it's very well written. I refer to that as yeah. well. So. The Rooming House Code, essentially, in Brisbane, wait to hear this, in Brisbane, self-assessable, like Victoria, for a rooming house of up to five occupants. So no more than five occupants. But that means in a house, you can build a house with five um, rooms have their own bathroom and everything there. So um, that's a really great strategy. For the rest of it, it will be code accessible. That means you'll go to um, the council and they will approve that. So, um, anything to say about that? Um, about, about the boarding houses or, or yeah. rooms, yeah. What would you or say to anyone in the room um, that's sitting here watching what you've done? Um, well, I suppose, like Amanda said before, you've got to take action. Yeah, you've got to get moving and do something. Yeah, it's not much good looking around at different things and not moving anywhere. I mean, if you move, start moving and you figure out you can refine it, it's easier to change direction once you're already moving. Um, and the other thing is, yeah, find something, pick a strategy. I mean, you saw with um, some of the other people who have spoken about it as well, they'll pick one strategy and they'll repeat it. So get good at it. Um, and that's where you start making money out of it because your efficiency gets so much better. I actually read it somewhere that, yeah, become an expert. I don't know where I read it. <laughs> become an expert in one thing and you'll fly. So that's what we've become. Huge round of applause for Margaret Amanda. <laughs>